Okay, let's talk about the Lakers. They're now 2-10. Uh, last night against the Kings, De'Aaron Fox kind of broke their heart with a million mid-range pull-ups and one Dirk-esque elbow turnaround thing coming around a screen. LeBron's already got an injury. Some sources say it's a groin injury. I've seen others say leg muscle strain. In practice, he had like a wrap around his leg. Is their season already over? They're three and a half games out of the play-in tournament. In 12 games, they have shot 35% from three as a team four times, including last night where they still managed to lose. I mean, for what it's worth, like they've had little moments on the offensive side where, let's say, AD and Lonnie Walker will run like an empty corner handoff action and Lonnie Walker can get downhill, or Austin Reeves even was able to attack off the catch a little bit last night and do more than just be a catch-and-shoot guy and... Kendrick Nunn had like a nice game against the Jazz where he made some pull-up jumpers. Like there's little sprinklings here and there of some offense besides just LeBron, do what you can, even though his jump shot hasn't been as good this year. And AD, please try to finish through all of this, most of the time, rough spacing that you have to work with. And I think that rough spacing isn't just on the ball, but off the ball. Like there will be plays where you can tell they're trying to get AD position in the post or he's setting screens to get himself a good spot. And defenses will throw multiple guys at him in those moments before the entry pass has even gotten to him, and then they'll zone up around it, and a lot of the time it's like taking extra seconds off the clock, and then they have to go to something else. Like, it's just a tough time. As for LeBron, so his jump shooting has been pretty rough to open up the season, although his last game against the Clippers, he was better. It's not the first time he's had a streak in the regular season where his jumper has just been just super rough. I'm not really concerned about it. As far as attacking and all that stuff, I mean, it's the 38-year-old version of the guy with not ideal spacing around him. Look, he's definitely not 2012 Miami Heat LeBron anymore, but assuming that the jumper just gets back on track, he should be fine, and he'll still be one of the whatever best players in the league. Although I would also like if he didn't rely so much on the nothing is happening, let me just shoot a three with my defender right in my face three. Although sometimes it goes in anyway, so I don't know. As for Westbrook, I mean, hey man, so far he's just been better than last year. For one, his threes have just been going in, as basic as that sounds. He's taking less mid-rangers. He's averaging the least amount of those in his career so far this season. And I think examples of that are like in the second Jazz game they had, where there were a few possessions where he had it on the right block where he could have gone for that bank shot mid-range that he goes to sometimes. Instead, he just keeps his dribble alive and he basically just like, backs up Colin Sexton, gets himself to the rim. Like, okay, cool. In the other Jazz game, he was repeatedly getting downhill off of screens and just scoring around, like, drop coverage pretty much, but not taking a million mid-rangers to attempt to do it. Keeping up with the whole keeping the dribble alive, like, there was one play against the Kings last night where he's posting up on Davion Mitchell instead of going to a mid-range pull-up, and he just drags the play out for as long as possible, ends up finding Damian Jones underneath the basket, like, you know, Russ hasn't been perfect, like the turnovers are still a little more than you really like him to be, and um, he's still not the finisher he was at his prime. So, like last night against the Kings, he missed quite a few at the rim, and the recent Clippers game, a similar thing, but he's still been better overall. Defensively, I mean, look, they can tell themselves, well, last night against the Kings, we didn't allow a lot of shots at the rim for De'Aaron Fox, he just made a whole bunch of mid-rangers. Okay, if you want to be optimistic against the Clippers, well, PG made a bunch of fadeaways. I don't know. There was also a miscommunication that led to one of Fox's floaters where he kind of just ran into it with no real resistance uh, coming around a screen. Against the Cavs, their transition defense was pretty rough. There was a number of plays where Mitchell, just after a turnover or whatever, because of course the Cavs are tough to score on, and um, he's just wide open in the corner, and it's just like, okay, man. Both times they faced the Jazz, I mean, look, everybody's having a tough time guarding the Jazz with their five-out offense most of the time, and just constantly moving, and Mike Conley making every great pass possible. It's just not looking good. Remember when they had like Caruso and Danny Green and KCP and all that? One thing I will say with the defense is um, Damian Jones has not given them much this season. He played like 20 minutes recently in one game, but that's about it. Going into the season, I was under the assumption that AD and Damian Jones were going to play at least some minutes together and see if you could get back to that just being huge in the front court to where teams can't really score inside on you at all. And I think they might have done that in the preseason a little bit, but that was just kind of it. It's just been AD at center the whole time. I'm not even saying that that would fix their problems, especially because offensively the spacing's already not very good most of the time. So uh, for what that means, I don't know. It also hurts him that Kendrick Nunn has not given him a whole lot because you were looking at him as the potential extra source of offense, pull-up shooting, catch-and-shoots, of course. So what's next? I mean, 
it's not trending in the right direction. Like, if you want to be the super optimist, it's LeBron comes back from this injury. His shooting just gets back on track because he's been a good shooter for a long time. AD can anchor the defense, and, I mean, for what it's worth, they were first in defense after the first whatever games of the season. That has been dipping pretty drastically ever since then, but it did happen for a little bit. And you can just grind your way to, I don't know, somewhere into the play-in tournament, and you're just all defense, and we do enough on offense, and maybe we pick up one okay shooter at some point in the year. I think that's about it. I mean, look, to me, if they were going to do the Buddy Heald miles Turner move, I think they would have done it before the season. Or I guess maybe if the team would have proven itself to be better than this, then they would have made the move and been like, okay, we can go for it this year, let's do it. But uh, at this point, 2-10, and I just can't really picture this front office being like, yeah, let's give up the two future picks and get two good players who fill needs, no doubt. But at this point, the hole is so deep. I mean, are those two going to dig you out of it? As far as the rest of this season, I mean... Look, it's going to be a media circus just because it's the Lakers and they're bad and LeBron and all that. I mean, for me personally, like, if me talking about the Lakers would effectively just be this video over and over again, then I'm probably not going to talk about them that much. Now, if they make a big move or just something crazy out of left field happens, then okay. Assuming LeBron plays enough games, if he doesn't get really beat up with some injury, he'll pass Kareem's record this year. And then after the season, they'll have an extra pick to move. Everybody will be off the books except for LeBron and AD. And I think Damian Jones has a little one-year player option. And we just do this whole song and dance again. And maybe they just do a better job between shooting and two-way players and just the whole thing. I guess there is the other thing where I've seen a little bit of, you know, should they trade Anthony Davis or whatever? I think this has been more so just conversations as opposed to like rumors coming from anywhere. I would not bet on that one happening. Um, So (laughs) for whatever that's worth, I don't know. 